Hello and welcome to my short lecture about tourist attitude towards and willingness to pay for eco-labels and tourism. My name is Isabel Lissner. I'm working for the Foundation for Environmental Education, which is running two eco-labels, namely the Blue Flag and Green Key. And this lecture is based on several studies about eco-labels and tourism, but also includes a research study that I did last year in the frame of my master thesis at the University of Greifswald in cooperation with Blue Flag International. I will start by giving a brief introduction into the eco-labels and tourism and my research study. After that, I will continue with tourist attitude towards eco-labels and give a summary of the results of my study regarding this topic. Following this, I will talk about tourists' willingness to pay for eco-labels in tourism and present what the participants in my study answered to this. I will end this lecture with a small conclusion. In general, one can say that sustainability gains more and more importance in tourism, both among tourists and tourism providers. Different consumer studies indicate that tourists are aware of the negative impact tourism has on the environment and that they favor sustainable practices in tourism. Uh, and in this respect, eco-certifications are useful pointers to help tourists find companies that actually apply sustainable practices and not only greenwash their businesses. To date, there are about 140 eco-labels in tourism, most of them certifying accommodation. But there are also eco-certifications for destinations, tourism activities and attractions, for example. Um, certification in general can be either process-based, performance-based or be a combination of both. Process-based means that the awarded sites implement environmental management systems such as ISO or the EMAS, the Eco Management Audit System. Performance-based means that the sites are assessed with regard to the compliance with certain criteria um, set by a certification program. Two of the most successful eco-labels in tourism are the Green Key and the Blue Flag, which are run by the Foundation for Environmental Education. Green Key is an international eco-label for accommodation, restaurants, tourism attractions, and there are more than 2 1,400 sites in uh, 53 countries um, awarded with the Green Key. Blue Flag is an eco-label for beaches, marinas and sustainable boating tourism operators uh, with almost 4,300 sites awarded in 49 countries. Originally, Blue Flag was only an eco-label for beaches and marinas, but the award has been extended to base, both based tourism activities in 2016. So from this year on, tourism operators that act, uh, offer activities like, for example, whale watching or diving um, can also apply for the blue flag. To be awarded, the tourism operators have to comply with criteria in the five categories of environmental management, environmental education, safety and services, as well as in sustain, uh, social responsibility and responsible tourism. As I have been involved in the development and the implementation of the new criteria for uh, sustainable boating tourism operators, it was my idea to conduct a study for, about tourist attitude towards this new certification and uh, their theoretical willingness to pay more for a certified tour. As a case study, I chose boat based whale watching in Iceland and I conducted the study in September 2015. So a few months before the award has actually been implemented and before the tourists could actually apply for the new award. Tourists got a questionnaire before or during the whale watching tour, um, which they had to fill in on their own and 337 questionnaires have been returned to me. To elicit tourist willingness to pay, I used the contingent valuation method, which is a common means of assessing the economic economic value of environmental goods and services that are not traded on the market.
When looking at other studies and tourism research, it can be concluded that tourists are generally aware of the negative impacts tourism has on the environment and that they favor sustainable tourism businesses. Tourism, tourist knowledge of tourism eco-levels, however, is relatively low. Fairweather, for example, uh, asked visitors to Christchurch, New Zealand, about their knowledge about tourism eco-labels and only about 13% responded that they have ever heard of them. A study conducted uh, in Germany by Hamele revealed that only 3 to 19% of people recognize German tourism eco-labels. Similar results were also found in a study of Java, who investigated the awareness of eco-certifications in the hotel industry in California, and 80% of the respondents of their study could not identify any of the eco-labels which were presented to them, and 70% were not even sure if they had stayed in a certified accommodation. Even if tourists actually choose certified products, they might not necessarily be uh, aware of it. Jensen et al., for example, investigated tourist awareness of eco-label in a Green Key certified accommodation in Denmark, and only 27% of the asked tourists knew that their, their accommodation was actually certified. Mm, so, sorry. So there is a disparity between tourist attitudes towards eco-labels and the actual knowledge about and response to them. The reason for that is that for most of the tourists, other factors than eco-certification are of importance, such as the value for money, the reputation of the company, or other factors such as the, the comfort aspect or the safety aspects. In the study that I conducted about, among whale-watching tourists in Iceland, I also asked tourists um, about their attitudes towards eco-labels and tourism. And one of the first questions was if they actually know what eco-labels are. And as we can see here in the graph, over one-third said that they know what an eco-label is, but we also have over one-third that didn't know what it is, and almost one-quarter that were not sure. After that, the tourists were asked if they generally think that eco-labels are useful. And as we can see here in the graph, um, more than one-third answered with yes highly, and almost 40% with rather yes, but we also have about 1% that answered rather no or not at all. Furthermore, the tourists were asked if an eco-label would have helped them to make a decision regarding the whale watching operator they chose. And we see here in the graph that 15.2% per thing, uh, per thing think that um, it, uh, or that answered with yes very highly, and almost one third again with um, yes likely. But we also have about 20% that answered said that it would have been quite unlikely. In another part of the questionnaire, an overview of the criteria for Blue Flag's new certification was presented, after which tourists had to indicate whether they would choose a Blue Flag certified tour the next time instead of a non-certified tour if the prices for the tours were equal. And we can see here that almost 60% said that it would have been very likely, or that it's very likely that they would choose uh, rather a blue flag certified tour than a non-certified tour. And we only have 0.6% that said that it would be very unlikely. When looking at tourist willingness to pay a price premium for certified tourism products, it can be concluded from different studies that they are at least theoretically willing to pay more. Just to give some examples, 69% uh, of Danish tourists in a study were willing to pay more for a certified tour, uh, a certified hotel. 40% of tourists in another study were willing to pay more for a certified hotel in Mexico. And 78% of tourists in Finland who visited a national park were willing to pay more for an eco-labeled national park. Looking at the tourists' willingness to pay more uh, 
uh, for a certified tour in my study, uh, I found out uh, that most of the people indicated that they are actually willing to pay more. So 18.8% that it would be very likely and 47% uh, that it would be likely. Um, only about 10% indicated that it would be very unlikely or unlikely that they would be willing to pay more. Tourists that indicated that they were very likely, likely or neither likely nor unlikely to pay more for a um, Blue Flex certified tour were then asked how much they would be actually willing to pay more. Attached to the questionnaire was a payment card with euro values from zero euros to 60 euros from which the tourists could choose from. And the tourists indicated values between zero and 50 euros in my study. And on average, tourists were willing to pay about 13, per, uh, 13 euros more, which were um, equal to around 20% of the price of the tour. And uh, furthermore, um, the study showed that almost 60% of the stated willingness to pay amounts were equal to or below 10 euros and that 12% were equal or above 20 euros. From the results of different tourism eco-label studies and the study that I conducted, it can be concluded that tourists generally think positively about eco-labels and tourism and appreciate it if the businesses are certified. Their awareness and their responsiveness to eco-labels, however, is relatively low. And how this attitude behavior gap can be explained has been the field of work of different authors in tourism research. One conclusion is that factors other than the environmental performance are more important to tourists. Um, so uh, certifications, agencies, agencies and organizations are therefore advised to also include criteria concerning other quality and service areas such as health issues and um, the access for uh, people with disabilities, for example. And the success of the eco-labels Green Key and Blue Flag might be exactly built on this fact because these eco-labels also include uh, other areas, for example, the access for people with disabilities and uh, service aspects. Although tourist responsiveness to eco-labels is relatively low, there is a growing number of certified businesses and destinations. Uh, so the reason for that is that there are plenty of other advantages for certified businesses and destinations, such as the reduction of costs and often also um, the financial support of the go government for these initiatives. And in addition, eco-labels are also good are a good tool to meet the environmental regulations or requirements within a country or a company. Further readings on eco-labels and tourism can be found on the following two slides, so please pause to read them. And then I would like you uh, to thank you for your attention. I really hope you enjoyed my lecture. And if you have further questions, please don't hesitate to contact me. Thank you.